man so okay another another uh, me talking video ladies and gentlemen so uh, buckle up your seat belt sit back relax because your boys about to go deep into what I have to say today. Now, as you see from the title of the video, I've never really talked about the mental aspect of, you know, coming up, you know, not only an athlete, but as a black athlete and, you know, family, friends and things, the pressure that is upon you for when you are, you know, especially, you know, gifted, you know, and I, I do heavily speak with black athletes because I know this is very deep within black families. And I know people who actually have kids, you know, in hopes of them making it to, you know, a professional level with like football and stuff and just kind of like their ticket to get out of whatever they're in. Now, I'm not saying this was my parents, but there is a certain depth of feeling that I get and um, a heavy weight that I get. Um, from like what was expected of me growing up. And I know there are thousands of youth that probably feel the same way. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So forward warning, um, I put ADHD in the title because I do have a habit of kind of like ranting a bit. And sometimes I'll rant and you're like, uh, how did we get here? You know what I'm saying? And I think it's kind of funny sometimes because you could just like, I could just be talking, you could just like listen to me and it's kind of like funny. It's, I, think, I find it entertaining. So that's why I keep uh, keep it in the videos, but just letting you guys know. And uh, this is actually something that I've had issues with over, you know, my entire life, you know, because I just thought like, I can't focus on anything, like one thing. And that's something that you guys say in my um on my youtube channel a lot like teron just focus up on one thing teron just and it's very hard i've never taken medication for it or anything um and fuck i think i think i got that and dyslexia sometimes because my typos and stuff or i'm just like lazy with 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 typing up stuff and not like rechecking it but i feel like even times when i'm rechecking it's not it's still like not correct so i don't know i'm just like a I just got a lot going on, but at the end, like these feelings, these things, ADHD, it's just like it ties into, and I'm a, like a super hyper, um, I don't know how what they call it, but like I experience emotions a lot higher than normal people, you know, whether it's happiness, sadness, or, you know, anger, like I just these things are just, I'm just like extreme for me. And I don't know how to explain that, but I, I know it's called something. And these are things that play into, you know, my mental health. And over the years now, in school, I was, I love sports. I love doing, playing video games and I love sports. You know, I didn't care. I didn't have a care for what sport it was. I just loved playing football. You know, I love being active. I love playing basketball. I love doing, you know, long jump, you know, um, high jump, track and field. I just love being active. I loved performing. I loved, you know, being able, being like gifted and being able to use my abilities and, you know, training hard. I love the training part. Love the training part. Well, depending on what kind, because sometimes I didn't like football practice. I liked being in the gym more than I like football practice. And then I would just want to show up to the game and just play. You know, I was, I was that person. Um, but... It wasn't until, like, my senior year of high school. Like, I played football, you know. I was good. And it wasn't until my senior year where I was like, damn, I could really, like, you know, take this somewhere. You know, I could really – I didn't, like, have a full-on dream yet of, like, NFL, but, like, it was a possibility in my mind. It was like, like, I could really, like, take this pretty far. And for me – at that time, it's about, I mainly thought that way because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. Like, I was an artist. Um, I drew a lot. I was an artist in school. So, you know, I went to college for actually architecture. But, um, you know, I mainly dropped out because, I mean, one, there was like financial aid stuff that I just wasn't about to deal with and pay for. And two, uh, calculus showed up on my schedule. And I'm like, bro, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing calculus. It's not. It's not happening. I'm not about to pay for school. Go go through this and like no, no. Nah. So um, but yeah, I want to. I want to go to um like interior design and like architecture and stuff. Um, that's what I want to try to go to college for. But I took a very like 
big jump mentally when it came to the first thing I thought when I came around to say like, yo, I could th I think I can make it to the league. I, you know, I think I can make it to a college team, make it to the league from there and, you know, go on. It's, you know, it started my senior year of high school. And I was just trying to bet. I was betting everything, you know, on my entire body. And I went crazy with like training like two times a day. Like off season was like never, like there was no off season really for me. It was always in season training. And I was continually just going back and forth from sport to sport, just still trying to take certain things from like basketball. Like, all right, you know, I can learn how to get my endurance better and jump more while I'm during basketball season and track season. I can learn, get, get faster and still work on my, um, my sprint abilities and stuff and stride and then go back, take all that, go back to football. Like that's kind of like the mental mentality I had. And I, how I saw it is like, I can just become this ultimate athlete and trying to make it hard for anybody to dismiss me. And for some way it worked in a way, but my knowledge of like, D1, D2, D3 schools is what kept me back because I ended up going to college, ended up going to this D3 school, and I didn't know any. Once again, I had no. My parents didn't know anything about like D1, D2. Like I had no body to guide me with where I should go really much, and um, that. But I all I knew was the school that I went to. That coach wanted me the most, so I was like, well, I'm gonna go where I'm appreciated. But little did I know, you don't get scholarships or anything to schools like that. So um, that was like the first like mental hit, like boom. All right, so I can't I can't go to this school. I can't afford to go to this school and then play for your team as well. Um, and then my second try. So once again, let me rewind back. This is me going through my motions after high school when I realized like I want to play football, I want to continue to play football and sports and things. And this is me going through my trials and tribulations of trying to make it to the league. And then we'll talk about, you know, the parts of like trying to be in the league and what happened and where my head was at and, you know, the failure of it as well. And then that's when we're going to get to the deep mental health part. But I'm just kind of giving you guys the background. Um, so secondly, you know, went to a junior college, went to two junior colleges and, um, I ended up pulling like a hamstring or something, um, and didn't, or my quad, I ended up pulling my quad. So didn't get to fully uh, play in junior college either. And years go by, um, I ended up going to a, uh, Olympia, Olympia Expo in Vegas. And that's kind of where my opportunity arose to, like two years later after I'm two or three years later after college um, that arose to me being able to play um, or have a chance to try out for the league. And that's kind of how everything started. So, you know, the thing about it is, is like with that year after I stopped playing football or trying to play football in college, like I was just working and I was training crazy, you know, trying to, um, I was trying to start videos with this guy called Jonathan Irizarry. Um, he is a buddy of mine. He started YouTube a very long time. Like, I didn't even know what YouTube was until I met him, honestly. And he would, like, come film videos at the 24-Hour Fitness on Royal sometimes. So that's kind of, like, where I started getting um, a thought, like, oh, like, okay, that's cool. Like, I can work out and, you know, make videos and talk about what I'm doing and stuff, too. So, but I it never like really fully went through it, but yeah, like that's kind of where the spark of like being a social media influencer started for me. Um, but yeah, so I got this opportunity to try out for or have a pro day and be seen in front of NFL coaches and whatnot. And, you know, trained hard for three months, you know, got in front of everybody and everything seems great. And this is like, this is the, this is where the mental part like really comes in because when everything is great, when you're being hyped up, when you're just being like gassed up the entire time, like, like there's no way he's not going to be somewhere. Then it becomes like a super heavy load because it, 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 if somebody would have told me like, ah, you don't have the, you don't have the abilities to be here in the the highest level of, of, of training or sports and you're like you don't you're like you're not you're not meant for this you know if somebody had had told me that from the get-go then I don't I think I probably would have dealt with 
my mental side of things a lot better, but nobody ever told me that. Everything was like, oh, you're a freak athlete. Oh, you got speed. Oh, you're strong. Oh, you're, you're vertical. Like everything, you're just an, a natural, just freak athlete. All the coaches, all the news reporters, interviews, everything that I did. And that's the reason why I got the opportunity that I got with trying to get to the league. And, you know, after my pro day, I had a killer pro day. 44740, 45-inch um, vert, uh, 38, like on the bench, 225 bench. Um, freaking, I had a decent uh, shuttle. I forgot what it was exactly. And um, broad jump, 11-foot broad jump. Like, you know, killer numbers, you know what I'm saying? And had Jets, went to the Jets, got invited to the got invited to the Colts when I was at a, another combine. I think it's the NSB combine. Got invited to the Colts facility, which was pretty cool. Ran some routes, did some things. Um, the only part about that is that when we went to the office, the Colts had asked me, like, some trivial type of situational, um, you know, stuff. And I just straight up told him, like, look, you know, I don't – have that part down yet but if you you know give me a chance like i'll get it down you know fast you know i'm i learn when i want to do something you know when i know like there's a lot on the line like i learn you know even and i, I just needed to be with a coach just to you know we could fast track you once we're on the field i can put things together you know i'm learning here you put me on the field and then I'll get it, you know, and you're not going to sit here and be like, no, nah, he's not going to like, I'm, I'm going to get it. You know, I'm very confident in, you know, when it comes to my physical nature and what I can perform when, when it comes to me performing and using my body, I'm, I'm going to show up, you know, that's how I feel with, with everything. And, and then like, and then my athletic abilities pick up for me for anything that I'm slacking in. But, um, didn't get that chance with the Colts. Went to the Jets, had rookie mini camp. Everything was great. I fumbled once. It's like I fumbled um, my first play. It's it's one of those things where you're so worried about not messing up that that you mess up, you know. And I remember that being like you know one of the things like on the news, uh, the interviews, and like on the pages, like ah oh, he fumbled once, but everything else was great, and and that's what it was. That one time I just I got those nerves out, I got my stuff together, like okay, you know, Teron, this is this is it, like let's get it going, and boom, I impressed the head coach, impressed the running back coach, you know, everybody there was impressed, but they chose to go with the other two running backs that were new. Um, they actually went to like college and stuff, and I didn't get the opportunity, and they ended up dropping them anyways. So that the rookie mini camp and waiting, and after rookie mini camp and, and coming to waiting and waiting and waiting for somebody to call because you've been hyped up. Nobody has told you anything negative, and that's one thing that I really hate with football. Because, and I've, I've seen it too many times. I, I hate with sports coaches, like, period. Like, just tell somebody, like, you're not cut out for this. You know? And for me, it's just like, y'all can't tell me that because y'all know I am, but you don't want to take me on for whatever reasons. And that's, like, a big thing for me. Like, you are you don't have the balls. How I took it is you don't have the balls to tell me, like, you're not cut out for this. Like, we're not looking for you. You, you, nobody could tell me that. Nobody could tell my agent that or nobody could tell me that. And that's like it really like irked me because like now I don't know what I need to work on. You know, like, what do you want me to do? You know, like you've you've brung me this far to let me be this far without any answers to uh, or or reason to, on, on how I can come back to this, you know, this level. Like, what is it that I need to do? And I think that's one thing coaches don't. Do at all for some reason they just won't tell you they can't tell you straight up oh you're not cut out for this oh you don't have this or you could have just told me you know like we just need somebody with who played college ball you could have just told me that like you know and for me it, it there was a time and point where I was just it took a while to really hit me as as like like as a year or two went by it was it was it started getting infuriated because like, I could wait a year but somebody be like, hey, they're interested. You know, I could stay, I could stay training in, in, in shape for training for a year. And then it gets to the second year, and now I'm getting like my agents just like got this opportunity maybe or a CFL or blah, blah, blah. And it's just like 
I, everything to me started to start becoming a bunch of just bullshit, you know? And I just felt like I could have been represented better. Um, but to me, it's like, y'all are telling me all this great shit about me and, you know, I'm a freak athlete and whatever. <laughs> and you're you're not even giving me, you know, you're not giving me anything to work with. And for me, it was like, you're killing not me, but the opportunities I can make for my family because you don't want to fucking tell me, you know, what I need to work on or what I need to do. You know, it's simple. It takes literally 30 to 45 seconds just to tell me something that like, hey, we don't want you because of this, this, this. Boom. OK, good. I take it. Leave. But I feel like a lot of athletes are just left with nothing. You know, and I understand for like things like when we go to one of the CFL camps or stuff like that, like those coaches can't, you know, but when I when you're when you bring me to the highest level a rookie mini camp, that means you're fucking interested. And then you have nothing to say after that and you just leave me in the dust. That's when I, I'm pissed off, you know? And for me, it's just like I was yeah, I was just in a dark like place I was in a super dark place because it's just like I'm literally right there you know it, you're I'm literally right there and you're like I could take care of me take care of moms dad sister like I could take care of everybody and like you guys you don't want to give me anything to work with so I can you know make this a successful moment you know for me and my family you know what I'm saying? And I know, like, growing up, like, I know athletes, like, you, you see being in a league, even though it's a very small percentage, as an opportunity to just be able to have, just live your life. You know, work hard, you know, for these years, and, like, you're set. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how it is, because my parents are older. Dad's in the 70s. Mother's in her 60s. They worked all their fucking life. And I have the ability to take that away and allow them to do whatever they want. And for and it was just I went through a tough time, yo. I went through a very tough time where I was drinking every day. Just drinking, smoking. Um it was it was hard. And you know, I I'm, I'm saying this because, you know, for somebody that feels the same way and and it's hard. It's fucking Hard, especially when you feel like everybody's like. I, mean, I, I know my family, my family, my parents. Like, yes, they want, they would love for me to be in the league, but they're not the ones. They, they never like. Oh, we gotta get you there. We gotta boom, boom, boom. I just know, you know, for me and, and how I take things, and even they, they might have not thought that way, but I was like, this was my chance to allow them to live. You know, like I've lived more than my parents. You know, I've done more. I've been traveled the world, done things. I know times are different, but for me, that was my opportunity to, you know, use my body up, work hard, and you know, give them everything. You know, try try as much as I can, you know, for, for them to be able to chill out because it, it sucks, bro. Like, I hate seeing like older people still working. You know, like like you're in your sixties, like you should be able to live your life. Um. But for anybody out there, I just kind of had to take it in. Like, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to like take God back in because as as time went on, I started to like get away from like you know praying and stuff for some reason. I have no idea. Um, but I had to kind of like you know let that back in a bit, learn like just meditate a little bit, um, think about like hey like you know it wasn't meant to be. And as time goes on, I realized, like, it wasn't meant to be. When I talk to other football players, I'm like, man, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. Like, yeah, they get millions, but there are certain, like, mental things, and there are certain things that I felt like I wouldn't have been ready to deal with from my personality and how I just take on things. I don't think I would have been mature enough um, or just, like, mentally um, – tough enough to deal with a lot of things that goes on with that type of lifestyle 
um, I've been like, you know, now it would be different. I would I would treat things a lot differently um, if I was to go in. But, you know, I got to move on now. Like, I'm, I'm too old for it now. So it's not going to happen. But you will just have to come to terms with, like, there's another purpose you have. Like, you might be struggling and going through something. But eventually you'll find out what it is. Because what, what I've had for myself next, like, I've, like, kind of gone like breathless like thinking about like dreamed like dreams like you dream about stuff like you have a dream but then there's like I, I think about this next chapter and I get breathless I get like nervous and something telling me just to go do it you know and I feel like when it's that like that I never felt I never had that with football I just knew that I had this opportunity and I want to do as best as I can to grab it with this next thing, I just felt like it just feels like the right place to be for me, you know, and eventually you'll come to that. And it's something that I felt a while ago that I should have been doing. And now I'm fully accepting it because I was still connected and, and stuck on playing football that I couldn't really give this next thing, you know, my all and my all focus like I wanted to without saying, oh, no, I'm going to stop and go back to football. So, um, but that being said, you have to just have very mental clarity of life. You know, life is unfair. Life is continually unfair. And you can't look at the next person and see what they got and and say, well, why you got that and I don't? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. There's there's a, a quote I came across. Like, there's somebody that's more underqualified than you um, in the position you want to be in. And that there's plenty of that. And there's plenty of that. And you just have to do the best you can uh, to get where you want to go. Um, and just continue to, you know, try, try. And then just like with football, there's sometimes you just try and just you're just one try too much. And because that's not where you're supposed to be. So, um, you, you'll find it, you know, you know, for, especially for like, I know there's people my age, um, and then for anybody younger in their early twenties and stuff that are, um, at the end of their sports career, like it, it gets better. You know, a lot of us go to, you know, to fitness because we're already fit. So, you know, it definitely works out. But if you actually have a, a brain, <laughs> if you actually have a brain, um, and know things outside of fitness, then, you know, go for that. Um, you still want to be physically, you know, physically capable, then find something. There are, there are plenty of things to do with, with, you know, gifted athletes. You know, you got, you could try out for rugby, you could try for bobsled, the Olympic stuff, um, getting the weightlifting. Um, like there are a lot of things you can like look up and do and you can, I mean, there's CrossFit, there's, heck, there's even, um, the mud rudder things is like professional things now. Like you can, you can make a living from the the ninja warrior stuff. I actually want to do that. Like you can make a living from a lot of things. You just gotta find it, um, reach out to people, and be a part of it. It's just, everything's just about reaching out and figuring things out yourself. Like you gotta go for it, and don't sit here and wait for something to come. Go find it. You know, a lot of people just sit here and just wait for stuff. No, go find it go get it, like be active. Um, and, you know, you want to get things done as early as possible, as young as you, you know, as you can, but don't rush at the same, like don't rush anything, but go get it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's just something I want to share with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Cause I know a lot of people, we go through a lot of mental and a lot of mental, my mental stuff comes from, from a lot, like, like most men, uh, finances, you know? Um, because a lot of us, like, like I've made mistakes on making bets on finances. I don't, I don't gamble, but I'm making bets as far as like, all right, I'm gonna do this real quick because I feel like if I can get this off, I'll be able to pay it off, and then it doesn't happen, you know. So, and then that's when debt happens and things like that. So, um, like I may we're able to live, live good. Um, would like to be a lot better, of course. I feel like I should be a lot further. And that was a big mental thing for me. It's just like I was at when I first started with YouTube, everything was going good. I was growing social media, is growing everything. And then COVID kind of hit and things start to go the opposite way. So I'm still trying to hit a reverse card um, ever since COVID, basically. 
Um, but with this, like I said, with this next venture I have, um, I, I, I know, I feel it, I just feel it that this is going to be my calling, my entertainment, my, I, I love my job, um, type of thing. So, you know, and you'll find yours too. So, uh, that's my message for today. You know, like, and subscribe to the channel, please comment down below. Also, man, this is the last day you can get 25% off of alpha line uh, supplements. Use code aftermath and alpha lead 10% off all the time code aftermath. And I will catch you guys later.